Magavanen, folks. I've been a bit unwell recently, but today I feel much better. At least better enough to, you know, resume work. Nothing too crazy, just the usual building an army worthy of Mordor and uh, occasionally solving integrals on the side. So today we have the integral from 0 to infinity of 1 minus cosine of x over x times 1 minus e to the x dx. And this looks like the perfect integral to solve using Feynman's trick. So we'll first of all define the integral function i of some parameter alpha as the integral from 0 to infinity of 1 minus cosine alpha x over x times 1 minus e to the x dx. So immediately we notice that i of 0 is going to be, up in the numerator we have 1 minus cosine 0, which is 1, so that just collapses to 0. And that will come in handy later, since applying Feynman's trick is essentially just converting the integral problem into an initial value problem. So what we now plan to do is differentiate the integral function with respect to the parameter alpha. So we have d over d alpha integral 0 to infinity 1 minus cosine alpha x over x times 1 minus e to the x dx. We'll switch up the order of the integration and differentiation operators. And that yields the integral from 0 to infinity of the partial derivative with respect to alpha of 1 minus cosine alpha x over x times 1 minus e to the x dx. So this means we have the integral from 0 to infinity of 1 over x times 1 minus e to the x, the derivative of 1 being 0 and the derivative of cosine being negative sine, so the negatives cancel out. And because of the chain rule, we have x times sine of alpha x which is quite convenient because we can cancel out one of the x terms in the denominator. So that yields i prime of alpha being equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of sine of alpha x over 1 minus e to the x dx. And this looks like a suitable candidate for one of my other favorite tricks, and that is a geometric series expansion. Alas, it is not convergent, at least not in this form, but we can fix that real quick by expanding using the multiplicative inverse of this bad boy over here. So we have the integral from 0 to infinity of sine of alpha x times e to the minus x over e to the minus x minus 1 dx. And I'll write this thing down as negative integral 0 to infinity e to the minus x terribly, sorry about that, sine of alpha x times 1 over 1 minus e to the negative x dx. Okay, cool. Like I mentioned, we'll invoke the geometric series. So we know that 1 over 1 minus z can be expanded as the sum over k from 0 to infinity of z to the k provided that the absolute value of z is less than 1. And this is of course satisfied for z equal to e to the minus x on the interval from 0 to infinity. So we have 1 over 1 minus e to the negative x equal to the sum over k from 0 to infinity of e to the minus kx, which again is valid for real positive x. Okay, cool. So I'll just plug this expansion into my formula for the derivative of i with respect to alpha. So we have negative integral 0 to infinity e to the negative x sine of alpha x times the sum over k from 0 to infinity of e to the negative kx dx. And these two being independent of the index variable k means I can just take them inside the summation operator. So I have negative integral 0 to infinity of the sum over k from 0 to infinity of e to the minus k plus 1 times x sine of alpha x dx. And of course, I could just transform from the k plus 1 to the k realm. And that has the effect of simply 
now starting the sum at 1 instead of 0. So we have the sum over k from 1 to infinity of e to the minus kx sine of alpha x dx. Now let's just take a moment to analyze the integrand or the sum and in this case, whatever it is, it's an integral sum combination. So let's just analyze the function. So the absolute value of e to the minus kx times sine of alpha x is less than or equal to the absolute value of e to the minus kx, which is just e to the minus kx anyway. So that means the inequality also applies to their sums from k equals 1 to infinity. And we see that the right-hand side is a geometric series that converges uniformly for our domain of the x variable. So that means the sum is indeed uniformly convergent and we can switch up the order of the integration and summation operators so that we have the sum over k from 1 to infinity of the integrals from 0 to infinity of e to the minus kx sine of alpha x dx, which is just a sum of Laplace transforms, right? And the Laplace transform as a function of k in this case would be given by alpha over alpha squared plus k squared. And there you have it. You have an expression for i prime of alpha completely in terms of the alpha parameter. Of course, it's a sum, but that's not half bad. And I'd now like to recover back the integral function by integrating with respect to alpha terribly. Sorry about that. And wait, just that little curl to the side. Ah, much better. Anyway, so that means we have i of alpha equal to the sum over k from 1 to infinity. I could just expand by 1 half here to give us the logarithm of alpha squared plus k squared. Plus, of course, there is going to be a constant of integration that we need to determine. And for that, we'll make use of the result we derived earlier that i of 0 is equal to 0 which does imply that 0 equals the sum over k from 1 to infinity of log k squared plus c. And I think I'm forgetting something. Uh, oh yeah, it's the thing I most definitely knew I would forget at some point. It's the negative sign. Okay, cool. So we have a negative sign there and there. So c here equals the sum over k from 1 to infinity of log k squared. And plugging this into our equation for i of alpha implies that i of alpha equals 1 half. I think I forgot the factor of 1 half as well. Terribly sorry about that. But of course, negative signs and constant multiples are things that I tend to forget. So it's just the usual. We have one half of the sum over k from 1 to infinity of log of k squared over k squared plus alpha squared that I would really like to invert. And I can do that because, well, the log of x is equal to the negative of log 1 over x for non-zero x, of course. x has to be non-zero. Negative one half of the sum over k from 1 to infinity of log of k squared plus alpha squared over k squared, which of course could be simplified as 1 plus alpha squared over k squared. And you must be thinking, that's quite an exotic looking sum over there. How on earth would you evaluate a, a sum or an infinite series of logarithms? Well, in this case, it's actually pretty damn easy because we have a certain factorization of the sine function. Link in the description box for a video deriving this. At least I remember I did have a video deriving this. I'm not even sure anymore. It's been... I think I've released over 400 videos, 450 videos by now. I really don't remember. But hopefully it's somewhere. And if it is, you'll see it in the description box. So sine of z can be factorized as z times the infinite product of 1 minus z squared over k squared pi squared. Okay, cool. But how do we get from this to that? Well, that's easy. We first up replace z here by i pi z so that we have sine of i pi z equal to i pi z again. The product over k of 1 
plus now because i squared is negative one uh pi squared z squared over k squared pi squared so there is cancellation of pi squares and we immediately see that because on the left hand side we have sine of i times something that's actually i times the hyperbolic sine or i times sint of pi z equal to i pi z times the product over k of 1 plus z squared over k squared. Okay, cool. The i's cancel out quite, quite nicely. And this implies that the cinch of pi z over pi z equals the product over k from 1 to infinity of 1 plus z squared over k squared, which is exactly what we need, except for z being replaced by alpha. And wait a second, this is an infinite sum of logarithms. This is a product. Is that a problem? No, not, a, not at all. It's not a problem whatsoever, because if I just invoke logarithms, then we know that the logarithm of a product equals the sum of logarithms. So we have all of this junk on left-hand side equal to the sum over k from 1 to infinity of log of 1 plus z squared over k squared. So the result we're looking for is exactly this thing with z being replaced by alpha. So all of this implies that the integral function i of alpha sorts out to negative 1 half. Did I forget the negative sign again? Uh, nope, not this time at least. So negative one half of the logarithm, it's terribly sorry about that, sine or cinch of pi alpha over pi times alpha. And of course the target case was alpha equal to one, right? So this implies that the target integral i equals one half, or I could just invoke log properties and write it as a square root. So we have log of root, terribly sorry about that, pi over the hyperbolic sine of pi. And this itself is a beautiful result, but just some random maths 505 lore. The result can be expressed in an even better way. We can write this as the logarithm of the absolute value of i factorial, where i is the imaginary unit. Yes, I will link that video in the description as well because I distinctly remember releasing it a while back. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Do drop me a follow on Instagram as well. Thank you. See you next time.